Hello, welcome to another video. Uh, this video might look a little different than normal. I'm actually in Hawaii uh, this week, so I'm going to be uh, on my laptop, so I apologize. But today we're going to be checking out something really cool. This is Prox LB. It is a Proxmox load balancing software. Um, and basically what that does is it allows you to easily automatically balance um, your virtual machines between your servers. So in a high availability configuration, you're going to likely have multiple servers. And this software allows you to automatically or manually um, run it to kind of balance your virtual machines and balance your workload across your servers. So it's really, really a great solution. Uh, I've been using it for the past probably a month or so. Before we continue, I do want to thank the developer of this. Um, I've been working with him on this for a little bit now. Um, basically, there's a couple issues with the software that I could not figure out, um, but he was super, super helpful. And he helped me figure out the issues I was having with the software and now I'm running it. And I have to say, uh, this software is incredible. So it really just takes any of the manual work out of it. I'm running it in a daemon mode, which basically allows it to automatically um, load balance my VMs. Really great stuff, let's check it out. So you'll see on here, uh, this is the website for the software. Basically it's the Prox load balancer. Um, there's flexible balancing, grouping, uh, it's very secure. And yeah, so it's, it's really cool. I'm um, really easy to install now as well. Uh, he just came out with the Debian repository. Um, I'm not going to show you how to install it in this video. It's it's really simple. I promise. Um, I will link the github repo in the description below um, But essentially, it's just it's just this so you add his repository And he's gonna actually soon add this to upstream app repositories Which basically means that it'll be really easy to install you won't have to add his repo um, but for now you just add his repo install it and you are good to go so um, that is the lead developer obviously yeah, it's free open source. It uses the Proxmox API. So if we check out the GitHub page, you'll see all the code here. He's pretty actively working on this. As you'll see, it's five days ago was the last update. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff you can do. So like I said, obviously it integrates with Proxmox. Um, this is somewhat of a really good replacement for VMware. So it's a really kind of an extension to Proxmox, which allows you to kind of have a better, um, a better solution to automatic load balancing. So, what that means is essentially, uh, if your server has, let's say, 70% CPU usage, um, this can actually automatically migrate VMs off of that host onto maybe a server that has probably 30% CPU usage. Um, and you can actually get really granular with this as well. So you can make it um, really precise. You can have everything at exactly 70% CPU. Um, there's, It's basically called, um, I, th I think it's called the balancing number or whatever um, in the software. Basically, you tell it how precise you want it to be. Um, I've got it at five, I think, which I don't know what that means, but it's it's pretty close. It's between like the minimum server is probably 30%, max is probably 35, 36, so it's pretty close. Um, I've got about 40 virtual machines across five servers, so um, take that for what it's worth. Um, on the GitHub repo, though, we do have all kinds of other stuff on here, kind of features and that kind of thing. Like I said, you can install it through the Debian package. There's a um, GUI integration, which I have not even tried, honestly. Um, I've never seen it. I had not looked at it, but apparently, if you install the Proxmox L or the Prox LB service UI, you can actually do it in the UI. I'm more of a command line person at this point in my life, um, which is I'm surprised I'm even saying that. But here we are. Um, all the kinds of stuff you can do the config file. I'm gonna actually pull up my config file, um, and we're gonna take a look at the config file because I think it's really cool. So. Um, yeah, let's pull up the config file and let's get going. Okay, so a few things here. Obviously, I'm gonna have to blur some stuff out. That's just a given. Um, but this is the entire configuration file. So what this entails is you'll enter in the names of all of the hosts. You can do host name. You can do the actual server name. Um, it just needs to be able to find it on the on the DNS basically. So it's gonna look all of these up, get the IP, connect to it, etc. Um, we have a user. Um, it is highly recommended now at this point that you use the API. When I first started, uh, it was not. The API was not actually working. The developer worked it out with me. We figured it out. We're good to go. Um, token ID, token secret, that is all related to the Proxmox API. So essentially, all you'll need is these three lines right here that says user, token ID, token secret. Plug those into the Proxmox API. Um, actually, you'll get them from the Proxmox API. SSL verification, I have it off. Um, you could turn it on. I think you can do certificates with this. So I think if I trust these certificates on my Proxmox servers on this server, that would actually work. I have not tried it though. Timeout is just a timeout to connecting to the servers. Proxmox cluster, so this is kind of where we're going to be doing most of the configuration. Um, if you change the config, you're likely going to change this section. Um, so we have maintenance nodes, which basically allows you, if you set a node in here, so if we go down here, 
I could actually add, um, we'll say PX1. I can add server number PX1 to the maintenance nodes. And essentially it's going to migrate all of the um, virtual machines and containers off that um, host onto other hosts. So this is really nice if you're preparing to do maintenance, throw the maintenance node in here. Um, it can migrate them off for you. It's not instant. It does take a little bit, but that's just a limitation of Proxmox from what I can see. Um, Proxmox does take a while to migrate. We have ignore nodes, which you can just ignore them on here. I don't know why you would, but you can. Over provisioning, which it is over provisioning, which just allows it to have um, some extra breathing space there if you do um, want to migrate manually. Um, balancing, um, you can enable the balancing, which obviously I have it enabled in my config. Um, I'm not forcing anything because I don't want the migrations to be unsafe in Proxmox land. Um, parallel, maybe you can probably have multiple jobs running at the same time. Live migration, obviously, yes. I want this to be fully automatic, fully live. I don't want any downtime. Um, with local disks, probably that should be off because you really should never have local disks on your VMs if you're going to migrate them, but it is what it is. Balance types, you can balance VMs or containers or both. Um, job validation. This is that what I was talking about. I think if you change this number, you can make it more accurate. Um, method is memory. So this is balancing based on the memory. Um, the CPU usage is also an option you can balance off of. Um, I'm obviously doing memory. Um, assigned. I don't really know what the mode does. Uh, daemon. I'm not running this in a daemon, uh, actually, because I don't need it to always run. I, I do have it run once a day though. So every day it's going to run. It's going to make sure everything is nice and balanced and we also have a log level so that's pretty much the config file it's pretty straightforward um it's just yaml so take that for what it's worth again um but it's really easy and now you can you can even do system ctl commands so i could say sudo system ctl um i could restart it sorry that's reboot restart prox lb and that would actually go through and rebalance everything out if i wanted to manually um just an option there so with that being said, um, I do want to also pull up Proxmox to kind of see what this looks like inside of Proxmox. Um, I'm obviously, I, I said earlier I was not using the daemon and I am not using the daemon. Um, so you're gonna, so I said earlier that I'm not using the daemon and I am of course not using the daemon like I said. Um, but I do want to show you kind of in Proxmox how balanced everything is at this moment. Um, I've done nothing in Proxmox recently. So it, it, this is the number um, that ProxLB has basically come up with. Okay, so here on the screen, uh, you'll see that we've got the five nodes in my cluster. We have the IP of them, the CPU usage, memory usage, and uptime. Um, so number one actually does have 64 gigabytes of RAM. All the other ones have 128. So that's kind of a, a flaw, I would say. Um, I don't know if that's a limitation of Prox LB. Maybe it's just a single VM that's on this one that's taking that much memory. I have no idea. Um, but you'll see on these other ones, 34, 38, 40, 34, they're all pretty similar. And for, just for clarification, a lot of my VMs, some of them are about two gigs of RAM. Some might be 16, some might be 32. So it really does vary based on the VM. Um, so it's not going to ever probably be a exact 40% on every server. So I just wanted to throw that out just for clarification there. And additionally too, um, for PX1, that is technically the Seth master. So there's probably going to be extra memory usage on the server um, because of it. Um, just since that one is the Ceph master node or whatever, um, it's kind of in charge as the manager of everything. So um, that is very likely that that one is using more resources because of that. So yeah, that is about all for this video, guys. Um, I appreciate you watching this. I hope this is helpful. Um, this is such a cool solution to automatically balance your VMs. This is something I've been looking for for a long time. And the ability to add maintenance nodes is also really cool. So if I'm on my way to the data center, what, I'll, what I've been doing actually is I'll plug that into the maintenance node section. Um, and by the time I get there, uh, the nodes are already kind of rebalanced and the servers are ready to go. Um, and I can take that node offline really easily. So I think that's just a really cool feature to have. And I think this is a really cool software. Um, the developers seem to be really excited about it. Um, and I think there's gonna be a lot of progress coming um, soon to this um, with more kind of support for other distros of Debian. You can run this on the Proxmox hosts themselves. You can run this on another server, which is what I'm doing. It really doesn't seem to matter. It's really flexible, really cool. It just uses the Proxmox API. So um, this is what gets me really excited about Proxmox. There's all these kinds of third party things you can do. It's really, really cool. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.